Hello everybody. I'm here in Noblesville, Indiana at Always in Stitches. It's Dawn and you're meeting me at my sewing machine. Only today I'm not going to be at the sewing machine. I'm going to be at my cutting table. It is the last, the very, very last day of January of 2022. And I mean, yesterday was just Christmas, it seems like. It just, it just flies by. Now, we've got a little bit of snow, but we're getting some more snow. So, looking forward to being snowed in with my sewing machine. So, I hope you are too, if you're somewhere where it's going to snow. If you're in Florida and you're belly aching because it's 30 degrees, I don't feel one bit sorry for you. Are there okay? iguanas falling in Florida? I'm telling you, something's going on down there. I heard there are falling iguanas. See, that's right. Because they're freezing. Uh-huh. Because their temperature slows down. Nobody's making them little iguana coats, quilts. Iguana sweaters. Iguana coats and sweaters and quilts. That'd be fun, yeah, wouldn't it? So, okay. Well, today... I got my quilt back from the quilter, and I've got to take off the excess batting and backing. Do you guys ever, ever do that yourself, or do you have your quilter do it? I do it myself because I don't trust my quilter. Even though she's a grand and glorious person, I want to do it myself. I'm a control freak, if you don't know that by now. Know me by now. But... Especially if my quilt has points on the outside edge. So when I open this baby up, whoo, it's a big one. 70 by 70. And I'm not going to start on a corner. Okay? That's the first thing I'm not going to do is start Oops, on a corner. I always start on a corner. Do you really? And but why is I'm going gonna, gonna to learn why not to today. Okay. So I'm excited because I, I like learning that, I don't stuff. I know that there's a reason. I just never do start on a corner, okay? Because I think I want to establish my cut. I figured my that. My lengthy cut. I figured that. And my straight edge uh -huh. before I get to my corner. That makes sense. I mean, I just, I feel like that's the reason. If you guys are watching this, put in the comments whether you start on the side of the quilt or if you start on the corner, corner of, the of the quilt. Yeah. yeah. I'd be interested to see what you guys are doing. Definitely. Definitely. Now, you can only cut the length of your ruler, right? Right. Got to scoot it down. So, I mean, there's no need turning my quilt the length of the of the uh, thing because I'm only going to be cutting, and my arm can only reach so long. Right. So, I'm, I'm going to be cutting this in, incre in, in increments of 24 inches. And if my quilter is worth her weight in salt, or however they say that, that's an old saying, my quilt went to her square, and it needs to come back to me square. If it does not come back to you square, then you need to find a new quilt. <laughs> okay? So, um, that's one point. So, I'm going to lay my ruler down here, and I've got a seam line. Come up here, Peter, and look at my seam line here. Ooh. This is my border. That's a nice seam line. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. This is my border right here. And it was four and a half inches. And so now it needs to be about four and a quarter inches. And look at that, it is. It's four and a quarter inches because I don't have my seam allowance out here. So I'm going to put my four and a quarter. And look right here, Peter. It doesn't match up. See that? So I'm going to take my quilt. And I'm just going to tug on it a little bit until it does match up. All right, there's that. I'm going to come down here and get four and a quarter. So I'm four and a quarter here, and I'm going all the way down, making sure I'm four and a quarter all the way, and I am. I'm going to make sure my blade is nice and sharp in my rotary cutter. Before I move my quilt, I'm gonna make sure that all got cut, okay? Alrighty, so now I've established my line. Now I'm gonna to go to my corner. Now, this is kind of where I like, I've got this ruler at home that instead of being eight and a half inches wide, it's 12 and a half inches wide. 
No, I don't have it here. It's a, my long ruler. Oh, 12 and a half my inches long, wide, long. But and it's 24, but 24. by tw 12 I gotcha. And a half. I follow. I remember that big ruler that you kind of were saying, yeah. what in the heck is she buying that yeah. for? Yeah. This is where I would use that because it would give me more room to square up that edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on four and a quarter, and then that's going to be also four and a quarter here. So I'm going to have to turn my ruler around. Nope, I can't. No, I can't. Okay. Half, one, two, three, four, and a quarter. So I'm going to scoot that up. So there's four and a quarter there. Four and a quarter there. I have a seam there that you can't see because it's the same color. But look, I'm four and a quarter this way, and I'm four and a quarter that way. Do you see that? I'm going to make my edge. Now, if I had my bigger ruler, see, I could go on and that give me a bigger edge. But now I know that quarter is, I know that corner is perfectly square. All right. So then take, now my, this quilt is a square quilt. So it's going to be 70 by 70. And it's nice that I have a nice big table to work at. Just broke a nail. Oh, no. This winter has really been hard on my skin and nails. It's really been dry this year. But your hair still looks good. Well, thank you. Okay. Usually my hair gets real dry. Does it? Okay, so now I'm at four and a half again. Just continuing to cut down that edge. Also, another thing that my uh, quilter does, I don't know that if your quilter does this or not, but it's super important that they do this. If you'll come in a little bit mm -hmm. here, Peter. Uh -huh. See how she puts a basting stitch? That's a basting stitch right there along my edge. What if I had pieces? What if these had piece, they, they were as it was a pieced edge? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let me get this little quilt out here. Okay. What if this was the edge? Okay. Now, there would have been a quarter of an inch of fabric out here. I wouldn't have cut it right up to the edge because if I put a quarter inch seam on the, a quarter inch binding on there, if I would have cut right there, I would have lost that point completely. Do you see that? That would have been covered up. So I had to cut it a quarter of an inch beyond that. So if I had had all these seams along the edge, and my quilter hadn't based the edge, when she put that on her frame, that could come apart. So it's really important that you communicate with your quilter and let her know, or you put, the, you put a, a, a basting stitch on the edge before you give it to her. If you're afraid those seams are fragile, and you want those seams to stay intact, just go ahead and do yourself a little stitch along the edge of your quilt. Okay, so I'm going to be four and a quarter again. This to lay out perfectly straight. Four and a 
a quarter. Now this corner wants to tug in a little bit, so I'm just going to tug on it to whip it into shape. There's that. Okay, now I'm back to a corner again. So again, one, two, three, four and a quarter, four and a quarter. Now, to make this easier, if you wanted to get your square ruler out, look at the difference between trying to figure out, you know, where four and a quarter is on each of those. I could take this ruler, my square ruler, and if you'll come in here, Peter, it'll show me right where, see, right here's my four and a quarter. See that? Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit easier to manage. And I've got that 12 inch uh, difference length that I can cut all the way down there like that. Now I know that's square. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Oh man, I love this quilt. Uh, this is a new line called Beautiful Day. It's by Corey Yoder. And uh, the fabric's due in any time. Any time. So I've got to get this bound. I'm going to take this with me this weekend when I get snowed in at Shoshuana. Hopefully. And I'm going to get the binding on this. And if you're interested on in seeing how to bind, we have a video called um, Meet Me at the Sewing Machine, Creative Grids, Binding Simplified Ruler. How to use that and, and how to do binding. Have, we also have another binding tutorial too, I think. We do. We have one, uh, uh, another one. You're right. You're correct. There's another binding video that Dawn did. And it's more about how to sew the binding on instead uh -huh. of how to cut it. Yep. The one with the ruler is about cutting. The one, the other one is all about uh, sewing it on. To me, binding is an art. You know... Binding is one of my favorite things. I love, I really enjoy binding. I do too. I enjoy it very much. As a matter of fact, we have a binding service here at the shop. And um, I'm one of the binders because I, I do enjoy it so much. I think you bound one of my quilts. I think I did. When, you when broke, I broke my arm. When you broke your and arm. And I couldn't do my binding. Dawn came to the rescue. It was, it was a uh, broken wing. Uh, binding job I did for Peter. Because he think had it's, a little broken wing. I think it's still on the floor as a shop sample. I think it is. Now, wrestling around with one of these puppies is, is quite a job. That's, you know, when I'm used to doing little bitty quilts, the, doing something this big is, is quite uh, daunting to me because I'm fighting all this fabric, but uh, I still enjoy it very much. So, I'm still at my one and a quarter. Now, your measurement might be different. What if you've got a six inch border on yours? Whoa. Six inch border. Yeah, or how about if you've got a two inch border? I mean, it's not always going to be, you know, these increments. You have to uh, find your straight line. Let's see. On this quilt, oh yeah, look on this quilt. This is a bigger one. This was five and a quarter. Actually, this was five and, and an eighth. Five and an eighth. Five and an eighth. That's a weird measurement, isn't it? Dawn? Yeah. Do you have like a favorite size border that you like to put on your quilts? Like a go-to size where you start first no. and then go from there? No, 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 no. No, no, no? Some quilts don't even require a border. I just finished one for Moda. It didn't even have oh, a Oh, that's nice. It's a modern quilt. Okay. You know? Um, it all depends upon the size of your blocks. Okay. The, uh, your border should really kind of complement, shouldn't overpower your blocks. It depends upon the size of the print that you've chosen for your border. 
If you've chosen a small dinky print, you don't need to put on as big a border as if you would have had a great big gigantic floral that you really want to show off that maybe you've shown off in the blocks and then you want to show off in the border. So uh, these were five inch, these sew in at four and a half inch. They started out as five inch. I could have put a four and a half inch border on this. Uh, it's going to end up being a four inch border, but uh, it could have gone up to be that, but I wouldn't have put it any bigger than that you see because then it would start overpowering this block okay the block size was the whole block this block size here but you're going off the center but block but i'm just going off of this because that's really you know the focal Stand the out. main the yeah what i would what i would consider so you don't go you don't go any bigger than that block is what well, you're saying well i mean it all depends like on this one on this one i felt like this is a this is a five and a half inch finished five and a half inch finished block so I made my border a little bit bigger even though it was a smaller quilt mm -hmm. I didn't go by this little block inside I went by this because that's really what stands out see that mm -hmm. where you know these stand out here but I felt like this was more the size that I really needed to replicate or to stay within. So it just depends upon the, look at this border on this quilt. I mean, it's pieced. And then there's no border beyond that, just lets the binding. I am a person, and this is totally a personal preference, that likes my eye to stop at the binding. I very seldom will bind something with the same fabric that I quilt that I put on the border. I like something that contrasts. So for this uh, quilt right here, the binding is going to be out of this gray. Now it could have been out of this print, and that would have been okay, but nothing would have stopped my eye. Okay, that would have just kind of faded out into nowhere land. Where if I put this gray on there, that's going to frame this border really nice. See that? I can picture it. You can picture it in your mind, picture pages. But yeah, some quilts don't even require a border. Alrighty, here we go, back to a corner. So let me get out my 12-inch ruler again. Because that really did help. Four and a I love that ruler. Yeah, oh. The oh, yeah, you can't sew. This should be the number one ruler that you buy when you start quilting. So did you see? This was down a little bit, so I just tugged it till it got into place. Because, see, it's all hanging down, so it's kind of pulling it oh, at the bottom. Okay. So I pulled it into place. Now that didn't quite get there, so I'm going to bring this down, put it at four and a quarter, trim that little excess. See that? So work with what you've got, but if you've got the long ruler with the square ruler, it really does make a difference. Now, the other day I was sewing, I was trimming. I was sitting at my sewing machine, and I was just a trimming and trimming. Then I put this on here, and I went like this. And it just so happens that I had one of these that collapses back, and I touched myself. If I hadn't had one, that would have just went right. To, I don't know what I was doing, but I wasn't paying one bit of attention to what this hand was doing. And I didn't have that pressed in, and I hit my hand. Ah, be careful. Don't do that. Unless you got some whiskers that need trimmed. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend doing that. Oh my gosh. I'm in rare form today. I'm happy. I got a good night's sleep. Well, that'll do it. Yeah, and I'm getting ready to leave for the retreat. So, all How many well. people, how many friends will you see? Uh, we have, well, we had a hundred, exactly a hundred people sign up. But some people have canceled because of the storm. And some people have... Uh, got COVID, so uh, they're not coming. 
So we're down to 96, 94. We have six people canceled. So we're at 94 right now. 94 people at the retreat. We usually have 200 that attend this retreat, but because of the situation and because we have to social distance, we're limited to 100 this year. And uh, it's a huge, huge ballroom. But can you imagine what it sounds like being in a room with 200 sewing machines going at the same time? In a ballroom? It's a big ballroom. So the noise would reflect off the wood floor. It is unbelievable, the sound. I bet you it sounds like a factory. It does. It kind of sounds like a factory. A little but, quilt factory. But it's so fun. It's so fun. And one year we went around and we counted how many Janomis, how many Bernines, and guess how many, what sewing machine won out? What brand of sewing machine? I don't know. The Singer Featherweight. Singer Featherweight. The little bitty machine. Yeah. That's what went out. That's what most people brought to their retreat was one of those little bitty Singer Antique Singer uh, sewing machines, featherweights. So one year we have a girl in our club and she knows all about them. She knows how to refurbish them, take them apart. And so she gave us all a class wow. on how to take care of our. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and she gave us a little toolkit. Nice. And oh, it was so much fun. We learned a lot at those retreats. This is the Indiana State Quilt Guild retreat. If you are a uh, person that likes to go to retreats and you want to join a club, the Indiana State Quilt Guild is a nice club to join. We have. Uh, Four retreats, no, three retreats a year. We have wow. one at uh, Clifty Falls, Indiana. Oh, wow. I love Clifty in, Falls. In the fall, we go there. So that's all the way south. And in the summer, we go to Marion, Indiana, because that's where the celebration is. That's where the Quilters Hall of Fame is. I don't know if you knew that Didn't or not. know that. Quilters Hall of Fame is in Marion, Indiana. So we meet there uh, in the summer. I think it's July. And um, then in the winter, we go to Ship Shawana because it is the pajama sale weekend. If you wear your pajamas, of course, you know, it's below zero there now. But uh, if you wear your pajamas to the stores, you get 30% off of the fabric. So people are wearing their pajamas underneath their coats, going to the fabric store. In Amish country. I bet those Amish people think that we are the craziest women in the whole world. And men. Men go too. So anyway. Um, so I've got this all on the corner again. Quarter inch. I bet you there's a lot quarter. of quilt guilds in various different states. There are. Most why, all states have a quilt guild. Why do you think, why do you think somebody sh should join a quilt guild? Or, or should they? Well, it's very educational. I don't know about other states. Because I'm not in a quilt guild, and I never thought about joining one. Really? So I'm just curious about, like, what, you know, what. Yeah. In the state of Indiana, our mission is education. So at every retreat, we try to have something educational for all of our members. This, month, uh, this retreat, because of COVID and all, uh, we usually bring in a big name, like uh, Jenny Doan has been there, and um, uh, Lisa Bonjean has been there, Kansas Troubles has been there. You know, we usually try to get somebody with a big name, because uh, when you split it up amongst 200 people, it's, it's very reasonable you can afford to come. So, um, anyway, uh, this year, because... Uh, well, our big name teacher couldn't come because she was afraid to travel or something. I can't remember what the reason is. Kathy said she would come in her place and teach English paper piecing. You know, that's becoming really popular. And so if there was not a shop in your town or nearby you that had English paper piecing, see, and then you belong to the guild, well, then that'd be the perfect opportunity for you to take a class and uh, learn how to English paper piece, you see. So I think education is probably the number one reason why you should join a guild. Even if you don't join your state guild, lots of local guilds. There's lots and lots we have around us. We're really blessed because we have 
lots and lots of uh, local guilds in uh, our counties that are surrounding us. So we're, we're very lucky here in the Midwest. I know Texas has a lot of quilt guilds. Okay, so I'm just getting that on that quarter inch line, quarter inch, quarter inch, and I'm finishing up here. There you go. Now my quilt I know is squared. I don't have to go in and and try to finagle in any other way. All done. I know it's completely done. That was fast. Right, right. So what do we do with all of this? Okay. Well, sometimes. Yeah, what do you do with all that? Yeah. Sometimes I save this and make blank and stuff blankets to go to the animal shelter. Oh, that's, that's a good use. Yeah. Now, if it's a big enough piece, of course I'm going to save this fabric because you know me, I can get one inch pieces out of that. I can get a two and a half inch piece out of that. I mean, that's a good hunk of fabric. I'm going to save that. But what I like to do with these pieces like this is if I do a little embroidery, I like to put batting behind my embroidery wow. so it gives it a little bit of a quilted look. So I just save these if I just need a little piece. So like you, when you do hand embroidery, you're saying when I you'll do put hand a piece of batting right underneath it? Underneath, behind it. And then, so if I carry my threads, they uh -huh. don't show. Do you sandwich another piece of fabric or no? No, no just no. the batting? I just use it. Some people use a stabilizer or another piece of fabric, but I use a little batting because <sighs> it gives it a little bit of a I love that idea. look. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's awesome. Another thing I do with these little pieces is I have a little stack of them by my sewing machine, and when I have any kind of seam ripping or any kind of thread pulling that I have to do, I will use this as a thread catcher so that the thread is not all over the place and getting nice. on my quilt, okay? And sometimes I just whack off a piece and use it as a dust cloth because <laughs> my sewing machine gets so dusty. You know, nice. fabric is very dusty. So I'll wipe my sewing machine down with it. It's great for Swiffer dusters. If you got one of those Swiffer duster mops, you just cut it to the length, <laughs> punch it in the holes. It's a great Swiffer duster. I'm telling you, there's all kinds of things that you can do with your leftover battings. Don't just be throwing it away. Oops. It's good stuff. It's good. Have you been throwing yours away, Peter? I didn't know what to do with it. Well, see, that's why you come to uh, meet me at the sewing machine, But I'm going right? to save it for embroidery. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, it works really good. I should bring some of my embroidery sometime so that you can see that. Oh, I, I would love that. to see that. Um, so anyway, I just keep on, you know, just cleaning this up. And then look, I've got a nice big chunk of fabric right here that I can use as a background for a quilt or something. And, you know, um, a lot of times I'll cut this up and put it in my bins, you know, five inch squares or five inch strips or whatever it is I need. But I will organize it. You know, I just won't wad it up and throw it in a corner. You're more likely to use it, I think I've heard you say, if it's cleaned up and cut and straightened, because then you don't have to do all that when you pull right. the piece if out. It it's already like done. If it was like this in a laundry basket in the corner of your room, are you going to use it? No. No. If you've got it all cut up into five and a half inch squares in your drawer... And you come to your drawer and you need some five and a half inch squares, voila, you've got it, right? Yeah. So I, I'll take my time and I'll remove all this batting. Now sometimes the quilting goes over into the thing. <clears throat> but I'll organize this batting. Now see, I'm not going to keep that. Now look at this what this batting has. See how this batting has this extra piece of little stabilizer stuff? This is called scrim. And sometimes you need to know whether you're supposed to have batting with scrim or not scrim. 
So I just wanted you to know that's what that was called. I've heard of batting saying that, like, it's needle punched or uh -huh. it doesn't use scrim. Right. I couldn't ever figure out what they were talking right. about. Right. Well, that's what it is. It's something that holds it together so that you can quilt it farther apart. Oh, okay. Okay. Typically, on your package, it tells you how far apart you can quilt that so that the batting doesn't, when it washes, crumble doesn't into itself. Okay, so you look at your package, sometimes it's 5 inches, sometimes it's 10 inches, depending upon your quilt design. You see, this is only quilted like 2 inches apart. I'm pretty safe there. But if your uh, binding has scrim, you can quilt farther apart than if it doesn't have scrim. A lot of people don't like to hand stitch through scrim, but it doesn't affect me in any way. I, that, that's such a, you know, that's just an itty bitty little piece of, of nothingness that it's not going to bother me. So, yeah, I'll use pieces that aren't big enough really to embroider. Well, of course, I could embroider a long piece there, but I'll use that as a dusting cloth for sure, for sure. And then I'll get all this fixed. And then I'll save this. Now I have a, um, what I do is uh, I have a uh, laundry hamper in my sewing room and I just put all these in a laundry hamper until it gets full and then I know I have enough to make one pillow because that laundry hamper will hold enough scrap battings. I put my scrap fabrics in there. Anything I have left over that I'm not going to use uh, that's soft, I will put in that uh, laundry hamper and then when it's done, I just sew me a little pillow casing, you know, about the size of the bottom of the cage and I stuff this with it, sew up the end, and take it to the animal shelter. Or you can take it to your groomer. You know, they have cages that they put the animals in too. And so they can uh, use it there. So that's that. Got my quilt. I'm going to organize this fabric before I leave today. Got my quilt ready for my binding. I can hardly wait. I'm going to put bias binding on it because... I will be using this quilt. Uh, now this quilt's not going to cover my bed, but in the in the Valentine's Day, doesn't it look very Valentiney? Yeah. It does. Uh, for Valentine's Day, uh, I've got a a white. Oh, what it's called candle wicking, but it's also called chenille sometimes. But it's a candle wick white old bedspread really old and it's got some spots on it. But if I make my bed with that chenille bedspread and put this on point over my bed, so oh, it's beautiful. It's just gonna be just yummy. That sounds yummy, awesome. Yummy. Yeah, it's gonna be really pretty. For Valentine's Day, that'll be cheery to go into my room and see my pretty quilt on point. Sometimes they call that uh, bed scarves. When you just put a quilt on top of a some kind of a bedspread like that. So I know my quilt's square, ready for binding, and I'm ready to go. So until I see you next time at the sewing machine, get a lot of sewing done, okay? Talk to you later. Bye.